We can also add parameters to track the maintenance history and life cycle data about building components such as floors, fixtures, equipment, and furniture directly to our Revit building model, and then edit and update them directly in the Revit environment or in other external tools. Most of the elements that we'd like to track are components, which makes it easy to assign tracking parameters to them. We can create shared parameters for consistency across all our projects, add project parameters to the Revit model, and then assign these parameters to all of the model elements that we'd like to track. Flooring, however, is a little bit different. Flooring is typically assigned and tracked by the room. So rather than adding the parameters directly to our floor elements, we'll create project parameters and attach them to our room elements to track the information about the floor in that room. Let's see how that works. Let's switch to the Manage tab and open the Project Parameters tool where we can create some new project parameters for tracking floor information and assign it to the room elements. Let's start by adding a project parameter called Floor Type. This will be a simple text parameter. It'll be an instance parameter. Let's group it under the other parameters and then assign it to the rooms. Say OK and let's create another one. Next, we'll create Floor Installation Year. This will be an integer value. Again, we'll group it under Other and assign it to the Rooms. Say OK. The next one we'll define is called Floor Life Cycle. This will be the expected life in years of the floor. This will also be an integer. We'll group it under Other and assign it to the rooms. And finally, a field called Floor Cost Per Square Foot. This will be a currency field. Again, it will be grouped under Other and assigned to the rooms. Let's say OK to close the project parameters. And next, we'll create a schedule that will let us add a few calculated values that work with these project parameters. Since we're working with information that's associated with the rooms, let's just duplicate that existing room schedule and use it again. We'll duplicate it and we can change its name. Let's call it the Floor Replacement Planning Schedule. Let's add those new project parameters to this schedule. We can choose the floor type, the floor installation year, the floor life cycle, and the floor cost per square foot. Now, in addition to these fields, let's add a few calculated values. One will be the floor replacement year. This will be a simple calculation. It'll again be an integer. And to calculate that, we'll take the floor installation year and add to it the floor life cycle. Say OK. A second calculated value that we'd like to add is the floor replacement cost. That will be a currency field. And to calculate it, we'll take the floor cost per square foot and we'll multiply it by the area of the floor. Now to normalize the units between this currency field and the area field, we'll have to divide through by one square foot. Let's say OK to close that. Let's take out a few of the fields that won't be needed so we can simplify our schedule. We'll take out the department and comments to keep the others. Say OK and we have our new schedule. Let's enter a few values into our schedule and see how it works. For example, let's start with a lobby. If the lobby has a nice terrazzo floor, and it was installed in year 2001, and the life cycle of Terrazzo was somewhere near 20 years, you can see that the floor replacement year is planned to be 2021. 
that terrazzo floor has an expected cost of approximately $12 per square foot to replace it in 2021. So when it is time to replace that floor, we'll have an expense of around $11,752. For the retail spaces, they vary. We'll have polished concrete in this one. That was installed in 2001. It has a life cycle of approximately 30 years, and it's relatively inexpensive to replace, only about $7 per square foot. The other retail space is also polished concrete, also installed in 2001 with a 30-year life, $7. The third retail space, however, has a hardwood floor. It was installed in 2007 with a five-year expected life, and when it's time to replace that, that's going to be $14 per square foot. So you can see we have a fairly sizable expense coming up this next year for replacing that hardwood floor. The offices are typically carpet, which is a relatively inexpensive surface. We continue to replace that on a rotating schedule. Five years, that's going to be about $3 a square foot to replace. The carpeting in the next office, however, was replaced the prior year. So given the same metrics, it looks like we're going to have to be replacing that this coming year. So using this type of schedule, we can quickly enter, track, and maintain information about the flooring replacements and use this to help plan our preventive maintenance and replacement program for the building. For the components in our project, the fixtures, equipment, doors, windows, let's create the tracking parameters for those elements in a different way that will let us share the information with other programs. And to do that, we'll use shared parameters. Open the Manage tab, then open the Shared Parameters tool. We'll create a new group for our shared parameters. We'll call this Lifecycle Data. Say OK, and then add some new parameters. Our first one will be the installation year. This one, again, will be an integer. The next one will be the life cycle of the component. This will also be an integer. And the third one will be the replacement cost. This will be a currency. Say OK. OK. Now let's add corresponding project parameters so we can associate these with the components in our project. Let's add from the shared parameters the installation year. We'll group that under other. We can associate this parameter with any of the components in our project, but for this example, let's focus on the doors, the furniture, the plumbing fixtures, and finally the windows. Say OK to create that. Let's add another parameter. This one will be the life cycle. Again, we'll group that under other and add it to the doors, furniture, plumbing fixtures, and windows. And finally, we'll add that last shared parameter, the replacement cost. It'll also be grouped under other and be assigned to the doors, the furniture, the plumbing fixtures, and the window elements. Let's close the Project Parameters dialog. And now we can create a new schedule of the components to create the calculated values as well as fill in the data. I've created a fairly simple door schedule and added the new lifecycle tracking parameters that we've just created to it. We can now finish the schedule by adding in the calculated values. Let's create a calculated value for the replacement year. That will be an integer. And like in the previous schedule, the value will be the installation year plus the life cycle. Let's say OK to close that up. And we can see that the expected replacement years have been calculated for us. This is going to be useful for budgeting the replacement cost for these components into the years ahead.
let's add conditional formatting to the schedule to draw attention to the items that will need to be replaced soon. To do that, we can open the formatting properties for the schedule, choose the fields that we'd like to highlight, and say conditional format. In the conditional formatting dialog, you can set up conditions to determine whether a field will appear with a special formatting. For example, if we'd like to format this field based on the replacement year, we can choose the field that we'd like to test against. We can say is less than or equal to and enter a value. So if, for example, we enter the value 2013, all of the items for which the replacement year is less than 2013 will be highlighted. Finally, we need to choose the highlighting that we want to use. We'll choose a background color of yellow to make those stand out. Say OK and say OK. And you can see that in the schedule, the cost of the items that will need to be replaced within the next two years are now highlighted to draw our attention to them.